While Italy is famous for its architecture, statues, and gastronomy, less is known about the movement of its tectonic plates. And yet, it is the country in Europe with the highest seismic activity, and it regularly experiences deadly earthquakes, especially here in Sicily. Every day, the inhabitants of Catania can see the volcanic activity of Mount Etna, Europe's largest and most active volcano, towering above the city. A city that also lies on a tectonic fault stretching over 150 kilometers. To study it, a team of scientists is about to set sail on an oceanographic vessel, the Atalante. Under the aegis of project leader Marc-André Gouchel, a CNRS researcher, in a bid to shed light on the behavior of this fault, discovered only 10 years ago. It is like a strike-slip fault, which means that one of its blocks is moving laterally relative to the other. For the moment, we don't have much information about its long-term behavior, but we think, for different reasons, that it probably moves at a speed of one or even two centimeters per year at most. The vessel is leaving the port of Catania with 70 sailors and scientists on board. During its two-week mission, it will travel above the fault some 20 kilometers from the coast. It will sail over strategic points for the researchers. Because under the surface, the North Alfeo Fault lies at a depth of 2,500 meters. These images from a previous mission show the reliefs it creates on the ocean floor. Two years ago, the team installed a fiber optic cable that crosses the fault in four places to study the movement of the plates. This type of cable is already used underwater for the internet. By sending laser light along this entire optical path, we can get information about the geometry and the deformation of the cable. If the fault moves, the cable will stretch in some places and contract slightly in others. That is what we hope to detect. The cable was installed over a length of six kilometers and then connected to an existing submarine network linked up with the port of Catania. There, the data is collected in a physics laboratory. It passes through this simple yellow cable before being recorded and shared via computer. Offshore, on board the Atalant, the trials have already begun. As with these geodesic stations, which will measure the movement of the tectonic plates with precision. These devices, well known to scientists, use acoustics. Their results can then be compared with those of the submarine cable. The acoustic beacons on either side of a fault will measure the travel time of the sound between them. If it gets shorter, the beacons have moved closer together, and if it is longer, they have moved apart. In other words, we use sound to measure relative displacements on both sides of the fault. Several types of instruments are deployed all around the fault. Day and night, the crew and scientists are all hands on deck as the program of this mission is very demanding. In particular, they have to recover the 29 seismometers called OBS deployed last year. To do so, the engineers send a sound signal underwater. The device is subsequently released from its anchor weight and rises to the surface. It then emits a light so that it can be located. The data from the seismometers will help to assess the risk posed by the fault. A fault can behave in different ways. There can be a gradual slow slip that does not generate earthquakes, or the fault can remain blocked for decades, if not even hundreds of years. And this is the most dangerous type of fault. If we take the example of eastern Turkey and the border with Syria, this fault had not produced large earthquakes for about 140 years. It had accumulated almost three meters of potential slip, which was released all at once. 
months, generating a 7.8 magnitude earthquake. Seismometers make it possible to monitor the seismic activity of this fault. The collected data shows low amplitude earthquakes that cannot be detected from the coast. But this information is only recovered once a year, when the seismometer is brought up. Unlike the submarine cables, which share these results almost in real time. These are one curve every month, okay? And so, for example, here you can see that initially it was relaxed, like there was nothing. And coming back there one month after, we have a positive peak. And then this positive peak more or less stays there, because this means that uh, a positive strain has developed. There is kind of a, of a talk about a possible evolution of, of, of this peak, but it's still early in development. For the time being, the data from this cable is not yet calibrated and therefore not entirely reliable. The current at the bottom of the sea and the temperature variations on land alter the results. However, field missions could help develop and improve this technology which would allow for real-time monitoring of the activity of a fault, and perhaps even the anticipation of disasters. This could eventually protect coastal cities like Catania, whose apparent tranquility hides intense activity beneath the surface. <laughs>